everyone, it's Stephanie. I'm an unprofessional nail artist and a streamer over on Twitch. And today we're going to talk about my new favorite nail art technique, which is Chroma Depth. So, Chroma Depth is a form of 3D, but unlike other forms of 3D, you don't actually need 3D glasses for it to look good. It won't look 3D, but it won't have that weird kind of double image thing going on that you get with all other forms of 3D. So with a pair of Chroma Depth glasses, you can harness the power of neons to make your very own 3D nail art. So I first learned about this technique from Defunct Land. Defunct Land is another YouTube channel that specializes in theme park history and going over defunct attractions. So a while back, they did a video about the old mill at Kennywood, which for a time was a Garfield-themed dark ride that used Chroma Depth for their 3D elements. So as soon as I heard about this, I became totally obsessed. I knew I had to get this on my nails. So I went out looking for some tutorials on how to do this. I ended up finding uh, Scott Campbell's channel, and I checked out his tutorial. I will link all of these channels in the description below. And I think I have it pretty well down how to do chroma depth on my nails now and I really want to share that with you. So the really cool thing about chroma depth other than not needing 3D glasses for it to look good is that you don't need any particularly special products to do this. If you are a nail art aficionado you probably already have these things so what you need are some true neons and what I mean by true neons are neons that are black light reactive. You're going to need some white polish and you're going to need some black polish. But if you do want to see them in 3D, you're going to need some 3D glasses like these, Chroma Depth 3D glasses. You can find these on Amazon. You can find these a few different places. But if you're interested, on September 18th on my Twitch channel, I will be doing a subathon. And anybody who becomes subbed during the subathon, whether you buy your own subscription or are gifted the subscription, will be eligible to receive a signed pair of these in the mail from me so you can enjoy enjoy my Chroma Depth nails. I'll be doing all October and make some for yourself. So without further ado, let me teach you how to do Chroma Depth. Okay, so here we are. I have two nails prepared. For these nails, I just did this kind of brick wall background. This is not black light reactive. I don't recommend starting with something black light reactive. You might be able to make that work in a way, but for today, we're just going to do a non-black light reactive background. So this is a non-black light reactive gray and a non-black light reactive white. And let me show you what you will need to do the design. The big thing you're going to need are true neons. So in my opinion, the best true neons you can get are the Cirque Vice Collection. Cirque releases the Vice Collection every year. And they're always different colors, but sometimes they do re-release old colors. So right here, we are going to be using Cushy and Pyro. I'm just going to keep it really simple today. So we have a cool tone and a warm tone. If you don't know what cool versus warm is, think of it as closer to red or closer to blue. So a yellow is going to pop more than a green because the green is closer to blue, but it will pop less than pyro, which is closer to red. Because what happens when you're doing chroma depth is that the warm tones pop further out than the cool tones. So that's the big thing you have to remember. The stuff that you want to kind of fade into the back but still pop is going to be your cool tones. The stuff you want to pop is your warm tones. And of course, that's all relative. So if I go in with a blue neon, it's going to pop less than this green, and this green will pop more, so that in itself could be the 3D effect. Same with if I put yellow behind this orange. By the way, if you're wondering what I'm wearing right now, this is Reflector by Cert Colors, so uh, sorry not sorry if you're distracted by my nails. So these are good, but even if you have these very opaque, no background needed colors, I still recommend that you use a white. So for today, I'm going to be using Cirque Colors Carpe Diem. That's one of my favorite whites because you're going to be using this as a base to make sure you just have the most saturated neons you can get. So this means that you can use a less saturated neon than the Cirque Vice Collection. Cirque Vice Collection is great. You never need a white background on your nails to make them pop. But for this technique, I still recommend using a white background because you just want this to just make the most of it. So just do that. And then you're going to need a black to outline what you create. 
This will work if you don't outline it, but I think that outlining it in black just really makes everything pop. So why not make everything pop? So here's what we're starting with. We're going to be doing this hand painted and we're also going to be doing this stamped. And I could show you the different ways to do it for both techniques. So let's just start with the basics. Let's just start with hand painting. Okay, so here we are. I started off with this brick wall background and it's not blacklight reactive. You really shouldn't start with something blacklight reactive. It could work if you use a cool tone in the background, but I would recommend just starting off with something that doesn't react to blacklight. Uh, you can use straight up black, but I think it kind of looks cool to have these effects on a brick wall. I did it when I did my nails for Potch Fad and I'm doing it again here. I did put this on like super fast speed while I'm telling you how I did this. So forgive me for that. So I started off with white. I actually had to go back and, and add some more spider web here. So you just want to put the white down really, really thick just to make sure that you have just a lot of opacity back there. So as you can see right now, I'm just finishing up that spider web. And then I already started going in with that Cirque Cushy Green. So I'm going to cover up the spider web with that Cirque Cushy Green. There we go. So just make sure that you really, really saturate all of that paint on top of that white. You don't want any of that white to be showing through. You're probably going to be putting a black outline on it. So you might not need to get all the way to the sides, but I still think it's a good idea. So here you see I have finished the web. I've covered it entirely with Cushy. It's nice and black light reactive. There we go. Now what we need to do is we need to let that dry for just a minute. And then we're going to be going in with the black outline. So here I go with Memento Mori by Cirque. And I'm just going to use as fine of a liner as I can find. I'm using this really fine liner for this entire look. It's just my favorite brush right now. So I'm going to go through and really line this web, make sure that everything has this black outline. And this is really going to help it pop. Like I said before, it will pop even if you don't have that black outline, but it will pop even more if you do. So I highly recommend doing that black outline. And I'm just going to speed forward a little bit until this black outline is done. You don't need to see the entire thing. So now that that black outline is done, we're going to go in and we're going to make the spider. I started making this spider with a dotting tool. I do like dotting tools when you really want to get a lot of paint down in especially a circular area, but it does lack refinement on the side. So I ended up having to go back with a brush. I'm just doing a simple circle spider. I was told that the spider that I'm drawing actually isn't anatomically correct. So we actually ended up having a not safe for work nail stream in the discord where I replied to the spider not being anatomically correct by making a spider that was too anatomically correct, or maybe not actually anatomically correct for a real spider, but uh, it was a good time. So I'm just drawing in that background of the spider in white. And as you probably guessed it, we're going to go over that spider with some more neon paint. So I'm going to go over that spider with Cirque Pyro, which is this beautiful, beautiful neon orange red. So I'm going to really saturate that on top. Make sure none of that white is showing through. And I'm going to flip through to when we have finished painting over this spider. Now that the spider is finished, we're going to go in again with that black liner and just make sure to get every little spot down with that black liner. Make it as thin as possible and fast forward a little bit again and we're done. There is our spider in front of the spider web. I'm going to add two little eyes because <laughs> I just wanted to really go all in with my not anatomically correct. And there it is in the black light. You can see how popping it is even without the glasses. But when you get the glasses on, it'll look even better. You can see the chroma depth through the screen, actually, but it doesn't look quite as good as it does in person. So if you do get your chroma depth glasses, you can check out my nail art. You can check out really almost any neon nail art that's been in black light. And you can also watch like ride throughs of Garfield's Nightmare, that old chroma depth ride that was at Kennywood. If you put your brightness all the way up, you should be able to see a lot of that in chroma depth 3D, but it does look a lot better in person. So I really think you should try this at home yourself. 
Okay, now we're going to go into some stamping. I'm starting off with the same gray brick wall. Again, it is not black light reactive. And I'm using here Hit the Bottles Home Harvest stamping plate. I'm going to be doing some green leaves in the background and some orange red ladybugs in the foreground. So I'm going to pick all of those up, get them all ready, and then go back in, of course, and isolate the images that I want with tape. And now I'm going in with Cirque Cushy again on those leaves. You want to make sure that the neon goes all the way to the edge and that it's very, very saturated, just like you would do any time that you're reverse painting. But you just want to make sure you get as much neon pop as you can. It's going to be a bit thick, so you are going to have to dry these pretty well and then use a sticky base when you go in to actually lay them down. It doesn't need to be too insanely thick on this layer. We are going to be adding white on the back of this just to make it pop a little bit more. So... That will be coming up soon. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit to when this is done. And now while that dries, I'm gonna go in on the ladybugs. So again, we're going in with Cirque Pyro. I first started going in with a dotting tool. It wasn't quite as refined on the sides as I wanted it to be. So I ended up having to go back with my fine liner just to make sure I got all the edges, but it did get it nice and saturated on that stamp. And now I'm gonna go in and do the background on the leaves in white. It's gonna be so so thick back here when I stamp these. So like I said, if you're doing this, just make sure that you dry that stamp completely. I think I dried it for about five to 10 minutes when I was doing this. And that made it so that the white was all dry and didn't squish out the sides because that happens to me a lot when I'm reverse painting and adding a white background, which I do almost every time. I just want everything to be completely opaque. So I, I make it really thick. Okay, we're gonna do the white background on these ladybugs. And for this, now all I have to do is is paint the sticky base onto that press on nail. I use Orly Bonder. I know a lot of people use sticky bases just for stamping, but Orly Bonder is the same color and works exactly the same as those sticky bases. So I don't feel a need to buy a special sticky base. Okay, so my nail was a little bit bigger than the stamp there. I had to just do it kind of crawling up or down the nail depending on your orientation. But I think for those kind of leaves, it looks a little viney. It looks pretty cool. I like it. And then I did it a little off center. So I'm stamping the butterfly to hide my shame. And there we go. There's that chroma depth. That's it popping. If you have those chroma depth glasses, you should be able to see it pop a little bit. And there you have it. That's how you do chroma depth. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching my tutorial. If you had a really wonderful time, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more, please smash that subscribe button. If you wanna hang out with me in person, kind of, then come visit me on Twitch. I stream Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday every week. And I also have a brand new podcast with my friend Danny Shout. It's called Two Lacquered Ladies and it's available wherever fine podcasts are sold. <sighs> okay, that's it. See you around.